Steam created their top 100 grossing games list of 2017 and published it at the beginning of January, so I thought it would be interesting to go through the best strategy games of this top 100 and list them here for you guys, with small descriptions about what each game is in case you somehow missed them. I'm using the term strategy here rather loosely, there will be tycoon games and management simulators also. Steam broke the list up into bronze, silver, gold and platinum categories, but we don't know the order of games that generated the most revenue, we just know what category they were in. To create a more fun list, I went to Steam Spy to gauge how many owners there are of each game, so that we could get a rough guess at what the top earners are. My reasoning being, the more people that own a game, the more revenue it probably generated. Of course, explaining many of these games in a short sentence or two will mean I'll miss out on some of their features, so remember if a game interests you, you should look up the game for more info. So let's start off. Starting off with bronze, we have our first entry, Endless Space 2. Endless Space allows you to pick one of several civilizations within the Endless Universe and engage in turn-based 4x style gameplay, where you build up a large empire through research, economy and military might. The visuals and narrative of Endless Space are pretty much unrivaled when it comes to the strategy genre. I highly recommend checking it out. What's interesting about this game is that it had a free weekend, so the numbers are hard to gauge, but it's had a recent surge in popularity and has no DLC, so all revenue generated are from the sales of this game. Next up we have Northgard. Northgard is a settler style RTS based on Norse mythology. You'll choose one of several Viking clans and unique traits and attempt to take control of an island that's filled with mythical creatures and rival clans. Sector-based gameplay is the name of the game where you'll need to manage your manpower across different sectors and specialize them to support your military, economy and research. Currently in early access, the game has sandbox and multiplayer modes and is currently cooking up a campaign slated for a full release later in the year. Next up could be a bit debatable about whether it's a strategy game or not, but it's Football Manager 2018. This is one of two games on the list I've never actually played. I played the old ones a long time ago and I think you need to be extremely clued in to be able to tell what the changes are with each iteration, so I'm not going to pretend I know what the major differences are here. Basically, if you're unfamiliar, this is one of the most in-depth management sims there are. Create a club, buy and sell players, set formations and tactics, track individual players' performance, watch the games in 3D, track player markets, manage the club, deal with the board and finances and much, much more. This one is sitting on Steam as mixed, so you might want to do some further digging to see if it's for you or not. Next up is our third Sega game so far, and that is Dawn of War 3. Again, this game had a free weekend, so it might have unreliable data on Steam Spy as to the amount of owners. Quite a divisive game, sitting at a flat 50% on Steam, Dawn of War 3 took the series in a more hero-orientated direction and had some fairly outdated visuals. The game features a fully voiced campaign, a strong multiplayer focus as well as extra features such as an army painter. For 40k fans it's a fun game to jump into, but I think the consensus is that you shouldn't expect any longevity out of it because of a lack of races, odd design choices for the franchise and a shrinking multiplayer community. Next up is Oxygen Not Included. Oxygen Not Included is a side-on 2D colony management sim. You'll start out on a randomly generated asteroid and have to figure out ways to recycle materials and resources in order to survive. The game has a quirky and unique art style but has a lot of depth to it, with several environmental systems to worry about such as plumbing, power, airflow, heat and then per person systems to worry about like stress, hunger, oxygen, diseases and skills. The game is also in early access with updates arriving every few weeks, adding new features and polishing the systems that are already in place. Leaping forward now by a few hundred thousand copies, we arrive at RimWorld, another early access colony management sim. RimWorld takes a different approach and instead focuses on the stories between characters driven by intelligent AI and personality systems. A world is randomly generated, you crash land and need to survive and establish your colony. You can tame animals, do trade, get involved in combat and of course build buildings and areas for your colonists to inhabit in order to keep them happy. There's a lot more going on within RimWorld, but when the Steam reviews are at a staggering 97%, you should probably just bite the bullet and get it. Next up, we have our first 2016 game on the list, and that is Hearts of Iron 4. No doubt this has been propped up by DLC and sales, as with most of the 2016 games on the list. Hearts of Iron 4 lets you take command of one of several major or minor powers right before and throughout World War II, and lead them to victory through a combination of military might and economic growth. The focus is all about war. You'll need to make factories that can supply your military with equipment, then by drawing out a front line and giving them a tactical plan, you can execute it and take over key strategic resources that will help in your war effort. The game does have a steep learning curve, so I'd recommend watching some videos or playing with a friend before jumping in. 
Next up is Football Manager 2017. Yep, not much else to say about this one other than it was placed in the same category as Football Manager 2018. Which one actually made more money is hard to say as they're both in the bronze category. It's likely that Football Manager 2018 made pretty much the same or a bit less than its previous game just because it's only been out for a few months. Next we have Factorio with a staggering amount of copies sold. The game is in early access and has never been on sale and has been on the market for just around two years, so it's an incredible feat that they're probably on the higher end of the bronze scale for 2017. Factorio is a resource management game where you gather and collect resources to build machines and create factories that will pass around their goods in an automated fashion so that you can eventually build more complex items, resulting in building a spacefaring rocket. The more you build and the bigger your footprint on this weird and hostile world, the more the native creatures will interfere with your plans. This is in the top 10 highest rated games on Steam of all time, so you don't need to take my word for it, it's a fantastic game. We're well and truly into Paradox territory now with Europa Universalis 4, another one of Paradox's great grand strategy games. EU4 is still going strong thanks to its continued support and development of new DLC every few months. A lot of people throw hate at companies for making DLC, but it has kept this game in the charts and keeps the free updates coming. Aside from it being overpriced, I don't personally have an issue with DLC so long as it's good content. EU4 is a more traditional grand strategy game, focusing much more on the economic and military side of things than the individual people. There's also deep-seated trade and diplomacy and the ability to play with groups of friends in large-scale multiplayer campaigns. Next up we have Crusader Kings 2. Famous for its 20 plus pieces of paid DLC, CK2 is still going strong as a revenue earner even though it came out in 2012. CK2 scales Grand Strategy down a bit to a more personalised level, dealing with noble family trees, their characters and giving you the tools to create deep political intrigue all while conquering medieval Europe. The game has a strong community behind it with plenty of guides and videos to ease you into it and there's also a demo if you want to just get a taste of the game. Soaring several million copies forward now we have Age of Empires 2 HD Edition. It's such a testament to how good this game is that it can still be ranked among the brand new releases of 2017 even though it's a fraction of a full priced games' cost and came out 4 years ago. This game really needs no explanation, it's one of the all time classic RTS games and we still play it every few weeks on the Republic of Play Twitch game nights. AoE 2 has had 3 DLC releases each with their own campaigns and multiplayer factions which have all been received positively and come in at a very reasonable price point. The fact that new content has been created gives me hope that Relic can emulate the formula and make a modern Age of Empires that doesn't lose touch with what made it so great in the first place. Doubling our sales now we get to the top of the bronze category, what I believe is a contender for the best selling strategy game of all time, Civilization V. With over 10 million players on Steam, I was surprised it was only in the bronze category as it has numerous DLC packs to help it trudge along in the sales. If you're watching this video, chances are that you probably own it. It builds on the existing formula of passive games, this time switching out the square grid for a hex based grid and more unique units and diplomatic options. You'll build your way up from the Bronze Age to the Space Age on a turn based campaign that you can play with 12 people and there's a plethora of mods to tailor the experience should you wish. Now we're starting off the silver category, so any game listed here and beyond grossed higher than any game listed before in 2017. To kick us off, we have just one game that released in 2017, and that is Total War Warhammer 2. Warhammer 2 builds on the existing formula from Warhammer 1, addressing some of the community requests and introducing a more narrative-based campaign, as well as a ton of refinements to the UI. For those unfamiliar, Total War combines turn-based strategy on the campaign map with real-time battles. Warhammer 2 is a self-contained game in its own right, and you won't miss anything by skipping the first game, but owning both grants you an extended map where all the main races and DLCs can fight together. Next up we have Planet Coaster. Released in 2016, Planet Coaster is a throwback to the Roller Coaster Tycoon games of old, made by some of the developers from the original games. The game features an extremely flexible creation system, from terraforming landscapes to creating shop stands, props and of course roller coasters, all of which combine into a theme park management game that focuses heavily on the creative aspect, with a flourishing mod workshop to find any items to suit your park's desire. The game also receives regular updates and features some small DLC packs to add different themes to your parks. Another 2016 release, next we have XCOM 2. No doubt this has been propped up from sales and the release of the expansion XCOM 2 War of the Chosen. XCOM 2 continues after humanity lost the war in the previous game and now you have to work against the clock to stop the advent project from wiping out the last of the resistance. 
XCOM 2 is a turn-based tactical combat game all about line of sight, cover systems, and praying that the odds are in your favour. Then there's the overarching metagame of building up an army of recruits and training them to be experienced soldiers to attack multiple positions at once as you battle the AI on the campaign. Your soldiers are customizable and memorable and seeing your favourite squad member go down is a painful experience. The last game in our silver tier outperforms the previous three games combined strictly in terms of owners and that is City Skylines. City Skylines is the latest in the City's franchise but one that elevated it past all competition. The game has an extremely flexible engine allowing for deep customization of terrain, simulated water flow, night and day cycles, and is capable of handling huge populations and complex systems such as traffic management, transportation systems, recreation and job flow. All of this wrapped up in an extremely intuitive and clear UI with a helpful starter tutorial. The game is also supported by a large modding scene, allowing you to customize your cities with props and pre-made assets or to introduce more in-depth mechanics for extra heavy simulation. Moving now onto the gold tier, these are the top 3 grossing strategy games in 2017. The next 3 games have all earned more in 2017 than the previous games and interestingly all of these games released in 2016. First off we have possibly my favourite on the entire list and that is Stellaris. Stellaris is a Paradox Studio grand strategy game set in one galaxy. You create your species, determine its government type and its planetary preferences and then set out to explore the galaxy. Each galaxy is fairly customizable with different settings for the other races and the endgame crisis you'll encounter. Solaris has had a slow but steady stream of DLC being added to it such as playable machine races, large space roaming monsters and supersized megastructures. I absolutely adore the game and my If the Romans Never Fell Let's Play was one of the most fun I've ever had with a game in an incredibly long time. Next we have Total War Warhammer 1. Yes, rather interestingly, Warhammer 1 generated more revenue than Warhammer 2 in 2017. Of course, it had the whole of 2017 on the market, but it actually only had one paid DLC released in 2017 and that was the Norska pack. Interestingly with Norska, you could get it for free by pre-ordering Warhammer 2, so Warhammer 1 being placed so high for revenue is a testament to how much the older DLC earns for the game and how well received it was. It no doubt was helped by the fact that owning both games in the series unlocked extra content also. As mentioned previously, Total War Warhammer 1 and 2 play largely the same, but each have their own unique races and playstyles both in battle and on campaign. The game has a strong focus on military conquests with legendary characters from Warhammer Fantasy lore in a sandbox campaign environment. With each major DLC, new content was made available through free updates so the game was greatly supported beyond its release, securing it the gold tier for revenue in 2017. And now for our final gold tier entry and our top of the list for best grossing strategy game of 2017 goes to Civilization 6. No doubt riding off of the coattails of Civ 5, Civ 6 exploded onto the scene in 2016 through tremendous sales but slowed down pretty rapidly and is currently teetering on a mixed review score. Several DLC releases have of course helped this game achieve the gold status for 2017 with such a large established user base. Now Civ 6 doesn't feel like as big as a leap as Civ 5 did, so it's hard to say what really sets this game apart from its predecessor without going into minute mechanics. There's deeper city building and improved diplomacy options, but the game has been met with noticeable AI issues. Currently for January the game is available on Humble Bundle for $12, so it's an absolute steal to try the game out, relatively risk free. There's also a demo to see if it's for you, completely risk free. So that's it for the list of top grossing strategy and management style games on Steam in 2017. I just thought it was interesting to see how these games performed and which ones are likely to have made the most money. We're often told that strategy is a dead genre, but as you can see, that while strategy is slightly more niche than other genres, it pulls in huge numbers. The silver tier games grossed around $20 million just to give you an idea of the amounts of money we've been talking here. Some fun facts about the list. Six of the games are published by Sega, five of the games are published by Paradox, four of the games are considered indie or made by very small studios, and those four are all currently in early access. Twelve of the games have had some form of DLC, none of the games reached the platinum tier of revenue, and only six of the games actually released in 2017. Okay, so that's it for the video. I hope you found it somewhat interesting and maybe found a game that you didn't know about. If you enjoyed the video, remember to like it, share it, and subscribe if you want to see more or see games like these. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.